So three, let's explore this handheld oscilloscope from FNIRSI. It was donated and the link to it is in the description and now let's take a look at it. It comes with this probe. Here's the oscilloscope in a nice protective rubber housing. And here's the charger, the USB cable for it, this low frequency probe probably, this thing and the manual. Just a very quick look at the specifications. Here is the screen size and resolution. 110 MHz bandwidth, 500 mega samples per second, and the storage depth is 240,000 points. The time base 5 nanoseconds to 10 seconds, 200 millivolts to 100 volts per division, 40 volts or 400 volts times 10, raise time less than 3 nanoseconds, 1 mega ohm. And probably 10 mega ohms with the time stand probe. You can charge it from 5 volts at 800 milliamps. The dimensions and the battery is 3000 milliamp hours. Here is the oscilloscope, and of course, I will do this. You can actually stand it like this. And here is the power switch, the LED indicating that it's charging or charged. This input. The USB charging port and this test signal output or calibration output. So let's turn it on now. You can stop it and restart it. And there is some menu. You can choose a DC or AC coupling, times 10 or times 1 probe. Some measurements to be displayed like frequency, peak to peak duty cycle, amplitude, amplitude positive and negative, maximum, minimum. Period, RMS, mean, pulse width, positive or negative, and negative duty cycle. Here you can choose the display persistence, none, one second or infinity, and the roll mode, on or off, trigger auto or normal, type rise or fall, the trigger edge probably, calibration and English or probably Chinese language, measurement, it shows a lot of measurements. Here you can switch times 1 or times 10 probe, so you don't have to go into the menu, AC or DC coupling, this can set something to 50%, the offset, the trigger point or the trigger level or this is probably everything set to 50%. But let's try to connect it to some signal. Let's try to connect it to this old signal generator. And let's try to set automatic. It seems to work. Here are the measurements again. The probe. Of course, times one or times ten influences the measurements. You have to set it according to the probe, so the readings are right here and here. Fifty percent. This is already set. If I shift it and use it again, it goes back to this. And the reference button can save the waveform as a reference and I can actually change it and this reference remains. And I can delete the reference. And 50% OK. It goes into the center mode and it centers itself. And millivolts and volts. And this actually works as plus and minus buttons for the voltage per division. This is like going down and this is going up. But instead of marking it as a time base up and down, they marked it millivolts and volts. And this same already applies to seconds and nanoseconds. Nanoseconds actually means reducing the time base per division, and seconds means increasing the time base per division. A single measurement can be done. You can save the waveform into a memory. Let's show a different waveform. Save it again. Again a different waveform. Save it and when I long press the save button, I can see the save the waveform as here. Of course I can probably delete them using a menu button. Deleting them and that's it. And the save button again to exit. The joystick can shift it to the left and to the right by shifting the trigger point. And you can move it up and down and the select button changes what the joystick does vertically. When you press it, now you're 
actually shifting the trigger point instead of the waveform and back to shifting the waveform and the joystick is just up or down and left to right but you can't press it, you're using the OK button instead of it now let's test the one a second per resistance It shows some persistence, but not very long. And the infinite one. A dimmer image of the waveform stays there forever until you reset it. And of course here you can choose more measurements, but then it covers almost the entire screen. So it seems to be more convenient to choose no more than three and if you need more you can press this button. Now let's try the calibration terminal. And the calibration waveform is one kilohertz but not the typical five volts but probably three volts. But it makes sense because five volts isn't even available in the device. It runs on a lithium ion battery. And of course the probe could be better calibrated. Now it looks nice. And now it's a nice square wave. 3 volts. And of course trying to do some bandwidth calculation. If the bandwidth of the probe is 100 MHz and the oscilloscope 110 MHz, then the system bandwidth should be about 74 MHz. That's the formula to calculate the system bandwidth based on the probe bandwidth and oscilloscope bandwidth. But of course typing it in a smartphone calculator is a nightmare. So the system bandwidth of this oscilloscope with this probe should be about 74 MHz. So now we know the system bandwidth and unfortunately I don't have any proper signal generator to test it but we can test it based on the rise time. And generally the rise time is about 0.35 divided by the bandwidth and the rise time of this system should be about 4.7 nanoseconds. And the rise time is basically the time it takes to transition from 10% to 90% of the signal. In our test the signal is going to be a square wave 5 volts, so it's going to transition from 0.5 to 4.5 volts from here to here and the time it takes is the rise time. So here's the rising edge of the signal and it's 1 volt per division and 5 nanoseconds per division. So 4.7 nanoseconds should be slightly less than 1 division. And we're measuring from here half a volt to here 4.5 volts or 90% of the signal and it seems to be slightly under 1 division so it's about 4, 4 point something nanoseconds. Looks like something between 4 and 5 nanoseconds which actually is right. And of course this is the shortest time base you can set and the oscilloscope does 500 mega samples per second. That's one sample every two nanoseconds. And with five nanoseconds per division time base, that's just two and a half samples per division. So the resolution isn't really the greatest at the shortest time base and it might show some artifacts but otherwise it's really not bad. And of course I'm testing it using the square wave oscillator in my inductance meter. And of course you can recharge the oscilloscope using this charger. And red LED indicates that it's charging. But now of course let's take a look inside of it. It has six screws. And it opens. Here it contains a battery. Not sure if I should try to separate it. I could damage it. And the battery can be unplugged here. And here is the rest of it. Here is the switch, this LED, it's a 3-pin LED so it probably turns green when it's charged. Here is some small heat sink, which seems to be a bit loose. It was probably on this chip. It's basically a tiny aluminium heat sink with some adhesive on it and it was probably stuck onto some of the chips, not sure which one, probably this one, probably the charging controller for the battery. It might have separated because of the heater, maybe because of the harsh shipping. And there is multiple chips, some five pin chips probably, capacitors, resistors, some discrete transistor, a crystal oscillator probably, another chip, 
multiple capacitors here, another 8 pin chip, transistors, 5 pin chips, there is an electrolytic capacitor and another, and this chip, and this looks like a relay. I heard clicking when using it, the relay is probably in the voltage divider, switching different voltage ranges, here is the USB charging port, this input, and here the markings of the components should be visible, if somebody is interested, you probably want to see especially the markings of the chips. And this one is quite poorly readable, maybe sandpapered. I'm putting a white heat sink paste on it to read it better. It seems to be an ARM microcontroller probably. Now the marking should definitely be visible. All the components are actually better readable with the heat sink paste on them, because they are using a laser to mark them, no longer a paint. Here's probably the charging controller chip with the heat sink falling off. And this opto-isolated device is bypassing this capacitor for DC coupling. And some adjustment capacitor probably here. Now removing another five screws and we should see what's on the other side of the board. And here is just the keyboard, this joystick and no other components. And here is the display. And here are the buttons. And here is the charging current of the battery over 700 milliamps. Now the battery is 4 volts. And nothing seems to be getting hot in it. I might not reinstall this heat sink because it can fall off and short something. Everything's fine in here. Everything's just a bit warm. And the LED actually turns blue when it's fully charged. And now of course let's try to measure the capacity of the battery using my DIY battery analyzer powered from my DIY bench power supply. And the battery was charged in the oscilloscope to nearly 4.2 volts. And the manual says 3000 mAh or 3 Ah. So let's discharge the battery at 0.6 amps, which is 0.2 C for the expected capacity. Down to 3 volts. And let's begin. And it's discharging now, so let's leave it discharging and let's see. And the result of the test is 2842 milliamp hours, just slightly under 3000 milliamp hours. And of course it might improve with a couple more cycles. And it also might be slightly lower because it's charging the battery slightly below 4.2 volts, which reduces the charge but increases the life of the battery. And you also might get slightly more charge from the battery if you're discharging it below 3 volts. Let's try one more cycle and when the battery is fully discharged it draws 780 milliamps from the charger. And now the charging chip is getting hotter because the difference between the charger voltage and the battery voltage is higher. I can see no inductor in the circuitry so the charging chip is working as a linear regulator probably, not as a switching buck regulator. I put the heat sink back. I guess they dropped it in shipping and so they should use more shipping resistant glue on the heat sink. Now the battery is full again and let's try one more discharging cycle and discharging it again. And this time the capacity is almost the same, just slightly more. And the energy in the battery was 10.35 watt hours. And how much the oscilloscope is drawing from the battery when it's running? About 240 or 50 milliamps. So that's this interesting oscilloscope from FNIRSI and that's probably it. Okay, so just a short peek inside of this charger, and... So that's the internals of the charger, and of course I think FNIRSI doesn't produce these chargers. These are probably made by some other maker, and FNIRSI just includes them with their oscilloscopes or other devices. And that's the marking of it. But of course this charger could be a subject for another video. That's it then, please consider supporting my channel on Patreon or using the thanks button. This helps me really a lot and big thanks to all of you who already support me.